Great to see you. Bump, bump, camels, humps on the internet. It is good to see you. And today is a day when, of all days, I feel the requirement to very determinedly put my attention into the future. So you got to know, that's what we're talking about, even though I wrote the post yesterday. We're going to start with some beauty, because beauty elevates the soul, and most of us sure as heck need that one way or the other. So look at this. This is kyanite, right? Raw kyanite. Now, it probably, I've seen this before, the way the camera records blue is not truthful. It comes across looking turquoise. Hi, Linda. Beautiful to see you. Good morning, good morning. Um... And good morning, whoever it is that's got their lovely red parasol on their profile picture. I don't know who you are yet, but it's great to see you. Good morning. Facebook, show me you coming on. But I don't know who you are because it hasn't told me. So this is Kyanite, and this is the Matrix, right? Barbara, good morning. A hey, local. Linda, it's you. Woohoo. Jasmine, hello. Here we all are, enjoying just a rock. Something very simple. You can see that it's one of the micaceous minerals because it's got this sort of layered striated thing going on and it's lovely but just remember it's not actually turquoise which it probably looks like it, the blue is kind of oh how do you describe kyanite blue it's like midnight blue but kind of a bit pale as well Faye, it's gorgeous to see you so here we are there's our first crystal. Here's another one. This very simple little piece of sparkling amethyst plate. It's not just a rock, you're right. Nothing is ever just a rock. Just like nobody's ever just a person, no matter who they are or what they've done, by the way. Nesreen, good morning! Look at this. Let's just have some sparkles. Let's have some joy. Let's put our attention on things that are lovely. Because there's all kinds of things that we've all been paying attention to that aren't like that. So just for, a, you know, for 20 minutes, let's not think about them. I tell you, I had a real battle in myself yesterday. Um, not, you know, look at the back of this. I love the back. You know, everyone says, oh, the sparkly stuff. But look at the back. This is what it stands on. It's beautiful in the layers. Um, I had a battle yesterday. I was a bit physically out of balance, which I eventually realized. Um... And that meant that my brain just wanted to go, ah! I sat here and thought, why do I feel like screaming? For no reason. It was really interesting. I did something about it. Good morning, Sang Marie. You can see a little face up there. Here's another rock. I really love this one. It is a complete mess, right? Everything is a complete mess for many of us right now. And the mess is uncomfortable. The mess is scary. We can't predict the future. The past has gone to hell in a handbasket. Um, and right now, it was pretty uncomfortable for many people, right? So let's just ignore that for the moment. Good morning, Jen! Um, and focus on this. This is smoky quartz. Focusing on the hopeful things. Yeah, yeah. Look, there's a little nugget of something fabulous in the middle of the mess. That is blue-green tourmaline. Yes, I love that it's fugly and it's a mess. Um, I love the stone. It actually has a really lovely soft energy to it. Hola, Jen. <laughs> That's about all I know how to speak in Spanish. But um, there you go. So it's got this beautiful um, tourmaline in it. So there we are. <sighs> it's lovely just to share rocks with you. And today, because it's so um, appropriate, <laughs> really, um, and this is in response to Nefertiti's question. She's probably going to come on in a minute. It's funny how some of you, it takes a while for Facebook to let you know that I'm live, and some of you it's immediate. There's just, you know, there, there is a miracle called the internet that communicates through, through web server to web server to web server. Sometimes it takes a while to go around the world, and sometimes it's really fast. You see my other hat. Not this hat. My other hat is that I work in IT, so I have a smattering of understanding of these things. So um, it's lovely to see you all join us. Julian, I can see you up there. Good morning. Um, so Nefertiti said yesterday, look, basically, for the first time in my life, my life is going to hell in a handbasket. And I'm doing my best not to freak out about it. Um, suggestions? Nora, hello, honey. <laughs> Great to see you. Um, and I responded a little bit at the time, but this is such an important thing. 
um, because it happens and it's happening a lot right now, that I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to open this up a bit. And I'm sure we'll do something with coherence later, but let's just explore this. Because what what is the deal that when you start making choices and creating yourself, cleaning up, hi Lindy, great to see you, um, what is it that is going on when you're just starting to think, I'm feeling good about this, good things are happening, I'm noticing shifts, people are treating me differently, I'm treating me differently. And then suddenly your relationship vanishes or you lose the job that you thought you really loved or, you know, something breaks or you have an accident or you have a diagnosis or the world goes crazy. Hi, Sophia! Um, Yvonne! woo We're all together! Um, you know, what then? You know, does that mean that you broke something, that you screwed up or does it even mean that there's a problem? right? Hey, it's you! Okay, I've just connected the little picture with you. Um, so how do you deal with that? And you know, for some of us, we have, well actually, no, I'm thinking about the person I'm thinking about. They have made massive, massive changes and their life is really challenging right now. John, good morning! Um, so, you know, how do you deal with the fact that you're doing all this work to change yourself and then the shit appears to just come down in bucket loads and, you know, and it's everywhere. What do you do? So the first thing to understand, and again, I just heard my hero Joe Dispenza explain this the last time I was listening to him. And I'm going to, uh, you know, this is just what I learn. And it's so true, right? Remember we've talked about the emotional bonds that you have with things and people and places and experience and memories and your idea of the future and everything else? And to just take it right back to basics, remember we talked about two hydrogen atoms and the energy that they share that binds them together into a hydrogen gas molecule, right? That energy is what holds them together and they share it and it's actually shared information. It's not a line, it's a cloud of energy and whirling electrons that they share. It's a single electron, which pops in and out of reality eight times a second. Good morning, Tracy! Um, that's true. Everything is constantly in and out of reality, eight times a second, right? We keep collapsing the same reality and it's always changing, you know, so that's a whole other story. So those two atoms share energy and, you know, if you break the energy between two hydrogens, that's what makes the power in the hydrogen bomb, by the way. They do things to, sh to break that bond and when you break that bond, kaboom, it takes a lot of energy to break that bond and you're right when you break that bond with the person that you've been sharing your suffering with oh you know don't you hate that person that we both work with and they're horrible and it's just disgusting and oh how awful the world is right now and you're right you're calling for change the universe is giving it to you but it looks like your life's going to shit right so maybe you stop complaining and suffering with that person you know and you don't want to talk about complaining and suffering anymore but they do and then they stop being your friend and maybe the person, you know, that you had this long-term relationship with, but there was just never any real emotional connection, and you both sort of settled with it. But then you elevated, and you grew, and you became clear about what you wanted in a relationship. That's actually what happened to me with my first marriage. Yeah, who knew? I've been married twice. This is my second. My, my beloved is my second um, life partner. First one really wasn't. A learning experience. Um... And I got clearer about what I wanted. And the clearer I got about what I wanted, the clearer it was that he didn't want that. So we went our separate ways. Hi, Maggie! Um, and, you know, or you get a diagnosis and you think, I've been doing all this stuff to keep, make myself healthy. And shit, I'm sick! So, you know, now what just happened? With that friend, you changed your energy. You stopped being, having this thing in common with them. No longer are those two hydrogen atoms bound together by a shared energy of suffering or complaining or comparing or saying, oh, I really like that lipstick. You know, you're just not interested in lipstick anymore. Now you're interested in the soul and growth and they're not. So you lose that friendship and you think, oh my God, I've known that friend for 20 years. And you changed and they didn't. And it can be the same with relationships. It can be the same with jobs. You think, shit, I was just bumbling along doing my fine thing. Um, and then, what? I got fired. I didn't do anything. What the hell happened? You changed your energy. You said, 
I want meaningful work. I want a, a better job. Um, and you didn't realize that you were summoning change from the universe. Hi, Carmelina. And it's going to deliver it to you. And it's probably going to come in a way that's unexpected. And that unexpectedness can often start with things, with, with the, the foundation being cleared of the stuff that isn't actually right. You know, you're going to knock down the old house to make a new one. And you know what? That hurts. It does. So it's okay. And you know, we, we most of us, if not all of us, I did too, had the situation where COVID-19 hit and pretty much overnight, whenever it happened, our lives changed. And the past as we knew it was gone. It's like, oh my God, where is my life? I miss my life. I miss being able to do the things I used to be able to do. Um, you know, and we mourn it. And it's okay when you lose things that have been a part of you for a long time, but actually you realize, oh my God, maybe I needed to lose that. Maybe I needed to leave that job so I could get a better one. Scary as hell, I've still got bills to pay. But, you know, maybe this is all actually what I asked for. It's just not what I expected. So it's okay to find it painful. It's okay to grieve the loss. But what's really important is to put your attention very determinedly, and it takes determination, because, you know, it's like, oh, but I missed that. Oh, I, I'm sad about this. Oh, I'm scared about that. Uh, you know, it very determinedly. Okay, that shit has happened. What am I putting my attention on now? Because remember, where you put your attention is where you put your energy. And where you put your energy is what is going to grow. And this is such a moment to moment to moment thing for me. For all of us, by the way. Because remember, our reality, you know, one electron, all, all the electrons in your body, all the electrons in your life, every particle, every atom in your life, is constantly going in and out of phase with reality eight times a second. Do you think that provides us with opportunity for change? But the point is that we have a very fixed idea and pattern of what reality is. It's not reality. It just seems really real. And so we keep collapsing infinite waves of possibility into this thing that we think of as our lives. And the energy that it takes to disinvest ourselves emotionally from everything we think of as my life is why it's just not so easy to change. And it's very easy to say, well, you know, I feel bad because of this circumstance in my life. But no, that simply isn't true. God, that's hard to say. It is hard to say. I think, oh, Maddie, really? But I have the same battle in myself. I have the same battle in myself. I can look at the world and go, oh, my God. And there are these things that keep getting delayed and, you know, it, there's really good reasons for the delays and they're spiraling and it's like, what are you going to do? Invest all your energy in that drama? Tristan, it's lovely to see you. Yeah, if we're always complaining, always be given things to complain about. And sometimes it's really hard not to, right? Sometimes there's such a lot of difficulty. It's like, what the fuck have I got to be grateful for? What do you mean I'm not supposed to be upset about this? But bottom line, I have to ask myself, how does it help me to do that? You know, last night sitting here, feeling my head wanting to explode for no, no reason at all. I thought, well, I can sit here and invest in this and pay attention to it and be present with it, which is one thing. But I don't really just want to do that. I want to change it. So I did, you know. I didn't actually put on the headset and do a meditation. I just sat there and did some internal work that I've learned to do from doing the meditation and allowed me to become more coherent so I could go away and do the rest of my work that evening, which I still needed to do. Yeah, <laughs> it is quite true. Um... Let me not get diverted. You're quite right, Linda. Because because when you express something and you really feel it, that is the signal that says to the universe, give me more of this, period. And that's a really tough thing to own when everything around you is screaming at you and saying, I'm a tiger and I'm going to eat you. 
and plenty of people are facing internal and external tigers right now. Some of them very real and very in your face and very physically threatening. Um, and the challenge is, when there is the physical threat, you have to deal with that. Because, you know, it's like driving on, on, the, on, the, on the motorway and somebody cuts you off. You have to do the thing to, you know, avoid them and protect your body and you get a shot of adrenaline to do that. But if you are in the situation where there is a looming threat, which is very challenging, and lots of us are facing this right now, the threat is looming. And there's all this chatter in your head and everywhere you look is people being scared. You have to be very determined to say, la, 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 I am not even, you know, no! Because right now, right here, there is no tiger. And it takes a tremendous effort of will in the middle of something that could happen to say, right now, it's not happening. I'm going to become coherent. I'm going to rest in peace. Because if I can do that, then I'm saying to the universe, give me more of this. Yeah, and it's very chaotic, and I have actually been aware of the chaos. It's actually affected me, <laughs> which doesn't happen very often, but I have been aware that I have been working with the chaos. So my determined decision is, I have to be coherent. And that means not putting my attention on it. I deal with what I have to deal with in my life. I put my energy where I choose it, and I determinedly do not look at anything else. So, you know, we can't put the energy in the past into what we've lost. Right now is where our power is, and who we choose to be in this moment, this minute, is what we're going to get more of. And I don't care how insane the circumstances are. I know this to be true. I know it to be true. And I remind myself when I get scared. Because I do. It happens. It happened yesterday. Great determination. I don't like the word discipline, Tracy. But I think discipline means different things to different people. And you're a very disciplined person. I know that of you. So for you, it's the same as determination. For me, it's like, I'm doing this. I don't care what's going on around me. I don't care what's happening in my body. And I don't care how long it takes. I am doing this. So now, before we completely run out of time, let's do some of it, right? We have this will. We have this determination to overcome our body, our environment, and our time. So let's use that. Notice how you have to, you have to pull it up sometimes because there's all this competition for your attention. But if you put your attention in, in your will, so hell, you know, really? The state that I'm inhabiting now is what I'm saying, give me more of? Shit, I'd better change it, right? Whew. So, okay, how do I take myself from that space to something that is softer and more open? Well, immediately, you see, with my eyes open, it's different if I sit down and do a meditation, but immediately with my eyes open, I want to put my attention in the heart, right? Yeah, you're setting the intention. That is the intention. That is a clear intention that I am going to create a change, so I already have a clear intention. My mind and your mind, if you've been doing this with me, is now pretty clear. Okay, I'm not doing all that shit around me. I'm doing this right now. So we get in quite intensely intent on what we want, right? But that's different. Yeah, well done, Carmelina. You notice. See, that's the thing. We all react. But the question is how long. You noticed it. You changed it. You shifted your, your state. So now let's do the second part. The first part is a clear intention. The second part for creation is an elevated emotion. Elevated emotions come from the heart. Put your attention in your heart. And if you like, you can breathe your determination in and out of your heart. Draw in your own energy. Yeah. Raise our own vibration. So this is what we're going to do. So you breathe in and out of your heart. And remember, as soon as you can, I encourage you, if you like this, if it works for you, to be breathing in and out from all directions, especially behind you and beneath you and above you. Because we forget those. You know, I breathe in from in front of, beside me. That's great. Do that. But put yourself in a sphere of possibilities and make that sphere big. Push your thought out. Big, big, big. 
Go out into the space of possibilities and breathe that into your heart. Limitless possibilities. With determination. You can be very determined when you do this. I am breathing in and out. Limitless possibilities. Limitless possibilities outside of me. Limitless possibilities within me. And I breathe those out. I don't even need to know what they are. I am invincible. I am empowered. There is love. I am love. I am light. I have the ability to change my state and change my life and change my world. I have the ability to simply let go of my grief and let go of my old life because I've grown out of it. So let me embrace this new unknown thing, which I don't understand and which is strange and scary and everything else, but let me breathe in these limitless possibilities and create. And I don't even know what I'm creating, but I'm determined to create an elevated emotion. So on top of that determination and out of all those limitless possibilities that are available to you in all of the space that you can't see but which surrounds you and remember it's all inside your cells and your bodies. Every single piece of matter there is which is tiny is surrounded by space. This solid stuff is illusion. So go through the illusion and pass it just on the other side of what you can see and feel and taste and smell is potential. Breathe that in. And breathe it out. And as you do that, as you become more heart-centered and you remember your power and you remember your connection to limitless possibilities, how do you want to feel? How do you want to feel? Peace? Gratitude? Gratitude for what? Gratitude that you can change your state. Forget anything else. Michelle, it's lovely to see you. Gratitude that you have this power to choose your state of being and realize, and I can feel you doing this, that you have this tremendous will, that you are willful and willfulness is good because you can choose who you're going to be. I had to choose very deeply. Because there is lots of madness and incoherence right now and we don't want to be part of it. We want to hold the light. It's our job to be coherent and to hold light, to hold coherence, to hold whatever that means to you. To breathe in and out of your heart and put your awareness into the potential that you can't see, but the more you focus on it, the more you feel it, and the more real it becomes to you. And choose what you accept from that. It's limitless. Everything we want for ourselves and for our lives and for our world is there just waiting for us to notice it and feel it and experience it and that is what makes it real this is our power and i think maybe it takes the huge illusion to make us desperate enough sometimes to look past it and choose something else this is what you can do and this is who you are Remember this, and please, as you wish, practice. Much love. I'll see you tomorrow.